Coach's comments brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico. Uh, Coach Neal, welcome back courtside. And, uh, New Mexico, just uh, to me, another solid defensive effort. That's three consecutive games where you've held them to 46 points or fewer. All of them wins. Well, you know, it's good to hold them to 46 and hold them to 15% three-point shooting and 29 from two. But, you know, we, we gave them a 15 to 6 run, and, and that wasn't very good. And, and, you know, it got to about a 9 0 run, and I said, I'm just going to let them play through it, let them play through it, and see if they can grow up as a team. And then they scored again, and I couldn't let them grow up as a team. <laughs> so I had to stop the, I had to stop it. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things. You can't, you know, and, and, and I'm, I've been concerned about somebody going zone the whole game against us. And I know that's our, you know, our Achilles heel that we got to improve on. But it's like I said in the press conference, we spent three weeks, we spent more time on zone offense than we have on man offense. And, you know, it's it's easier said than done, but you can't make shots, you can't make plays for them, and you can just put them in the right spots. But, you know, we just were very tentative. I mean, you know, D.D. shot six for 15, and, you know, he probably missed – six shots within five feet and he the shots that he'd made the last two games and Devin goes 0 for 7 and Hugo's 2 for 11 Xavier goes 3 for 8 so and you can't go 4 for 20 I told you guys if we shoot 23s um, we better have all our in, injured guys back if we're shooting 23s yeah you know, coach we were uh, talked about it before the game how the the uh, University of Louisiana Monroe was going to bring these stunt defenses right um in the second half, uh, in the latter part of the game, right. about the last five minutes, they started to do that. Right. And I think as a result, UNM turned it over about four times right. and, and kind of let them crawl back into the game. Well, I think they tried to do it in the first half, but we hit, you hit those two big threes. And then once you, as a coach, you say, oh, well, Get we probably can't do that. <laughs> you know, we've done a good job guarding them and probably could do that. And then... They got on a rhythm like we did against New Mexico State where we couldn't get anything to go and we weren't looking to be plays. And, and the only guy that was really looking at the rim was Tim Jacobson. You know, that can't happen. I mean, we got to have guys that want to make plays and guys that can make plays. And, and we were small at that time with, with uh, Joe and Devin, and those guys should have been able to make plays. They should have been able to, you know, X in the, at the top of the key and, and do some things and, and make good passes because they're both good passes. But... It's just one of those things. I mean, it's it's one of those things that happens. But you know, I thought our guys gave good effort, except for that one little spell in the second half. You come out from intermission after you've been down by five a couple of times in the first half. You close the first half pretty strong. Right. And then I was really impressed with uh, that sequence there, back-to-back -back possessions at the start of the second half, right. where Xavier Adams went down and posted up, and then stepped out and hit a three. Yeah, because they were guarding him with the little guy, and we just made an adjustment and did that. But, you know, it's one of those things where you had, you had chance, you're up 17, you're up 15, you have a one-on-one -on -one to go back to 17, and you miss the front end, and you can't, you know, you can't shoot eight for 14 from the foul line and expect to win a lot of big games, and then you can't have seven assists and only 12 turnovers. I mean, we our goal is 12 turnovers. We got to have more than seven assists, and um, you know, we just gotta we gotta keep working. I mean, we're we're a work in progress, and we've got no excuses. But the, you know, we had finals this week, and you know, hey, the bottom line is they're a good team. They took number eight Florida overtime so I mean you don't do that if you don't have any talent I mean um, so you know we just we just got a little low in the second half but we're six and three and, and looking forward to the next one yeah no there I thought the matchup was a lot similar to UNM but that team mirrored right. UNM it did and um, I thought you guys handled uh, you know their defense and, and, and of course um, it really in the last five minutes is when they brought it on but in the first half and we just couldn't buy a basket. I mean, right. we, we were getting really gimmies at the at the rim, but just couldn't convert. Um, but the defense was a staple, and that's what really carried you. And that's season. and that's what I've told our guys. If, you know, they just kind of fell asleep that last. You know, once we got up 15 and 13, they just kind of fell asleep at the wheel, and and they got to finish it out. They got to finish it out, and then they we didn't get a couple stops. They made a couple plays, and and you know, then they cut it to six, and. Then we got a battle back, but you know, all in all, it was anything. You know, anytime you win is a good win. Right. Um, how is Sam Logwood doing? Sam's got a sprained shoulder, 
so you know the sprain shoulder is a little different so he'll he'll be out and it didn't pop out so you know we got some injuries thing it'll be good to get jordan back you know i had a great conversation with him i didn't want to put him in there for three or four minutes uh i talked to him about it i said hey i want you to get get some work done on the bike tonight get some cardio in you know he's had nine practices out of 45 and you know his biggest thing is in shape he's healthy i think he feels good he has had a really good week of practice he'll have a good practice on monday get a good practice on tuesday and he'll get back in rotation which is good that gives another guy that can make plays and can score it this uh you get somebody back and now another ding this yeah and that's and that's one thing i need to clear up because i mean i'm getting i I love going out in public and i love spending time with our fans but here's how the injury thing works cullen and, and arthur are working to come back cullen's working to come back the reason why the January 5th date was set is because that's when we leave for San Diego State. Cullen cannot participate in a game after the 15th, nor can Arthur. Arthur's situation is a little bit different because Arthur's already redshirted. He started in December at his junior college, so his clock had started. So the only thing Arthur can do is, if he doesn't feel good, he can redshirt this year medically. Medical redshirt, play next year, and then hope that the NCAA will guarantee him a sixth year, which probably will not happen because he's got to be in incapacitated for two years and he wasn't hurt the year he redshirted in junior college and then with Cullen his whole thing is he's not going to be able to practice fully till December 28th and I have to make a decision before our 15th game what I'm going to do with him and he's he worked out a little bit today he's trying to come back he's trying to get back for our team but at no time either Arthur Edwards or Cullen am I going it's their decision either it's their health there's no you know, Cullen gets gets the choice to do it because he's my son. That's all BS. I and mean, Cullen gets to do it because he's a player here. Arthur gets to do it, but his situation's different. Now with Sam being hurt, it's a different deal. You know, the thing with Jordan Goodman, he's been hurt. I mean, the poor kid's been hurt. There's nothing discipline-wise. He's been hurt, and now he's back. And I'm looking forward for him to have a great year. This is a big run for you guys in terms of these four games before you have uh, the start of league play, right. you get to play them all. Right. The kids are just focused on basketball. Right. So and that's, and that's the biggest thing. It's a good stretch. I think our guys did really good in school. I think they did a great job, and they represent our university. But the biggest thing they can do, and, and Hunter knows this, being a former student athlete, it's not easy. And, you know, the most important thing is they're going to get their degree. And uh, that's the biggest impact we can have on kids. And, you know, hopefully we'll continue to get better as a team and win a lot of games, which I think we will. I like my team. Um, you know, just we just had a bad stretch tonight, and, and we'll go forward and try to get better. You know, Coach, I thought they played a, a, a pretty good basketball game. Yeah. It, it was ugly because they missed a lot of little shots. Right. Inside, but the defense and the maturity, I mean, I thought the bench, I mean, Tim Jacobs coming off the bench, Joe yep. Firstinger, I thought did played well. Um, you, you got some good minutes on uh, uh, Xavier, who started, but right. I thought he stepped up a little bit tonight. Yeah, and Sam played really well before he was hurt. Yeah. Played aggressive and made some really good plays in the first half. And one thing about Sam, he wasn't afraid to shoot it. And he, I mean, he got some good looks. He made some good shots. He just didn't go in. He had a couple go in and out. Made some good loose ball plays. And then Xavier came around and played with a lot of confidence in the second half. But those guys are learning. Yeah. And those, if you can't, the, I think the best thing about our team that's fun to watch is the, just the growth of these yeah. guys getting better. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing because if you looked at them at the start of the year and now you look at those guys like Joe and Sam and even J.J., I mean, he, J.J. really worked hard tonight. He really worked yeah. hard. He just couldn't get the, you know, we couldn't get the ball. He got a couple mm-hmm. bad screen calls and then I made a don't uh, bonehead play in a half and told our guys to foul thank goodness that was a good good foul because they missed a free throw uh, I thought we had a foul to give but JJ fouled on the screen so that put us over the limit so that was a bonehead play by me but you know the guys came back and started out the second half really good but we just got to keep working yeah it it looking better. Let's finish on that growth point that you mentioned. Because right. uh, talk about Sam Logwood, the the work that he's put in to go from where he was when he came here uh, with a jump shot that was really a work in progress, you know, to where he, he can knock down a shot for you. So now. what you're really saying is he had a really bad jump shot. <laughs> just be uh, just hey Robert, you've been around me long enough. Just be real. He had a bad jump shot. No, but but Hunter knows this, and I told the guys after the game, I go guys. You can't go four for 20 from three-point line, and you can't go eight for 14. And I go, guys, the guys that have improved and the guys that got better with their shooting are the guys that are in here. I go, I wrote up on the board all my players, and I go, he's in here, he's in here, he's not in here. I know who's in there because I got an eye in the sky. 
that thing's running 24-7. So in the practice, I know who's getting in there and who's not. Mm -hmm. Sam Logwood was in there this Sunday, mm -hmm. this past Sunday. He shot 600 shots. 600 shots on a Sunday. Now, that's on his own. And I told our guys, hey, guys, players aren't made in just practice. And Hunter will tell you that. Guys that really become players are the guys that spend time on their own. And we've got some guys that don't want to put in the extra time, and that's why they're shooting the way they're shooting, and that's why they can't make free throws and they can't make three-point shots. But that'll be changed. I'm sure that'll be changed once that, you know, coach says something and knows, oh, God, I forgot we had that video camera up there, and he knows who's coming in here on their own who's not coming in here on their own. So... You know, guys are made, guy, you know, you can do all the practicing you want, I can do all the teaching I want, and I'm really proud of my guys because they listen and they're really taking on to the teaching, but guys develop their game. We do a lot of individual development, and we've had a lot of guys that really, really developed over the years. We've just basically given them the tools to develop, and those guys have put in the time, and that's the difference for the guys that can make a shot and make a free throw than the guys that can't. Love the candor. <laughs> Always love the candor. Well, I mean, you just, I mean, you got to be honest, man. You just got to say the guy came here with a bad jump shot, and he did. And I give us, I give us a hard time. I go, God, did you even work with him? You're a high school coach. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, he, 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 goes, he goes, that's why we sent him here. <laughs> All right. Coming up next week, midweek game against Central Arkansas. Right. You know, Russ Purnell, he's a good guy, good coach, was the interim coach at Arizona. He's uh, been around basketball for a long time, really knows the game. Um, you know, it's a new coaching situation for them. So we've just got to go into the game trying to get better for us. And then we're just trying to do as good as we can and get as good as we can before Christmas break. And then the guys will have a break after uh, the Grand Canyon game. They'll go home for a couple of days and we'll get ready for conference. But right now, um, my biggest thing in practice is just trying to get our guys better in each situation. I thought we did a really good job tonight on our out-of-bounds defense, caused a five-second call, got a couple steals that we trying to change some things up. I know the the fans will say we haven't done a lot of adjustment, a lot of changes, but we did tonight, and we did some things differently defensively that helped us. And, you know, we really held a team that scored 15 points in seven minutes and down, which, you know, like I said, we fell asleep at the wheel. If you take 15 points off and you only give them seven, they don't get 40. So, I mean, that's pretty good in a Division One game with 35 second clock, but really proud of my guys' effort on the defensive end, and they're getting better. We just we just kind of ran out of gas and with Sam, you know, and they went small, so it takes J.J. and O. out of it. All right, Coach Neal, we appreciate your time. As oh, always. anytime, guys. Congratulations, three in a row. <laughs> All right, thanks. Coach Neal, our you. guest, your Delta Dental Coach's comments, Lobo Head Men's Basketball Coach, Craig Neal. It's brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico, almost 400,000 Mexicans covered by Delta Dental plans. For more info, log on to Delta Dental FM.